Thank you very much for joining me for another Fun with Bitcoin podcast. And this is the Lightning Node Roundtable number six, but it's also the first Lightning Node Roundtable of 2020. And, uh, you know, we've got some cool stuff developing and uh, we've got with us, we've got BTC Socialist, Ben. Uh, oh. We've we've got uh, Crypto Cloaks, Rick. Hello. We've got uh, Oliver. Hey. And we've got Suheb from Ride the Lightning. Hey, guys. And Oliver actually works at Lightning Labs. I didn't mention that, but uh, so that's where Oliver's from. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyways, guys, uh, you know, we haven't spoken since uh, since before Christmas, and uh, it's very cool to have you all uh, back on. So I hope everybody had, you know, good holidays, and I saw that there's been a lot of building. You know, we've got the, uh, the invoice terminal that we saw from Rick, so he's going to talk to us about that. Uh, Oliver is going to talk to us about uh, being a maître pâtissier, right? And uh, talk about some, uh, some bakeries. And uh, Suheb, I think, is, uh, has got something cool going on with uh, the Ride the Lightning update. I saw some updates from you. And Ben, we haven't spoken in two months. So we're, I'm going to start with you and, uh, you know, see what's, uh, what's going on, man. Yeah, just been, um, uh, there's a few conferences coming up. So just been getting ready for those. Um, uh, as well as that, um, I've, um, am I showing on your screen right now? Yep. You are, okay, because it doesn't look like that on mine. Um, so no, so as well as that, um, uh, I've been working on uh, LM Bits, which is kind of my little solution for, um, like I've, I've, a lot of like my point of terminals and, and the ATM and all those things. Uh, when I when I when I when I connect them to I muted funding, it. Don't worry. When I connect them to a funding source, um, I don't want them to have like access to all of my funds or you know my keys or whatever. So I, I've just Alan Bits is just a way of like a layer which sits on top of it, and you can make lots of little wallets. And each one of those has got their own independent API keys. Um, so I was going to do a little screenshot actually. Um, so it may take me a second to. Oh, there we are. Let's see if that works. Well, can you see that? Can everyone see that screen share? Yeah, yeah. we can see that. That's, hey, that's cool. very cool. Parking. Right, so um, uh, so this is kind of the wallet and how it looks. And then, as I said, every wallet's got its own API keys. It's like, really easy to like do um, uh, like a new wallet. Uh, just set up a new one. And then, ooh, there we go. And I've got a new, and that's got, that's got its own uh, API keys as well. Um, and like, you know, you can like generate invoices. Ooh a bit of uh, menu issues with this little menu there. Um, yeah, you can generate invoices pretty easily um, and uh, you can like send funds and stuff and you know, all the things you can do on Lightning. Now, so that's quite cool because it means I can like have um, a separate wallet for my point of sale terminal, I can have a separate wallet for my ATM, but this extensions thing. So uh, I wanted to kind of extend the functionality of it. Now I've got like a basic wallet. So, uh, and as you know, like I like faucets. So I've been building some extensions and the idea is that we'll make it easy for other people to build extensions into it as well. So say if you had LM bits running on top of LND and you wanted to make like uh, faucets, um, you can like activate this extension and then um, you get a new menu item here. If we go to this menu item and then say we call it something. So uh, I'll call it a faucet. I'm actually moving away from the word faucet. If you look, it's called withdraw link maker and make a link and all this stuff uh, because LNURL, LNURL withdraw is for so much more than just making faucets. But in this particular case, I'm in fact going to be making a faucet. Um, so I pick a wallet. So I pick that one. It's got 50 sats on. I'll say maximum withdraw um, is 20 sats. The min withdraw of this LNURL is, I don't know, um, let's say five sats amount of uses. Uh, I'll let there be four uses. And there'll be 45 seconds between each use. Now, with uh, the other faucet thing I made, the Sinclair faucet, if anyone's seen that on Twitter or whatever. Uh, it was cool, it was fun, but it, very quickly people made faucet milking bits of software. So if I click this little button, it will generate like a unique QR for each LNURL withdraw. Um, and then I, I click create link and then it generates the link. So now I've got the link here. Um, and then, you know, that'll just list, that table will list all the different, um, all your different LNURL withdraw links. Uh, but I can, I can do like a quick select thing here. And then there's my LNURL withdraw. So if you scan that with like Wallet Satoshi or Blue Wallet or something, um, you'll be able to take out the 20 sats every 45 seconds. Um, uh, uh, what I've also got here is I've got a shareable link. So if I click on that, here's a link you can give out to people. 
um, and it's just like a unique shareable link. Um, but as well as that, because I thought we are, we're our own bank, aren't we? So we should be able to print our own money. Uh, so if you click on print or withdraws, there we are. It, um, it, it makes like uh, uh, this nice little print out here. So you can print these out and you can put these uh, Zimbabwe uh, bills out and they've got the little LNURL withdraw links on them. Um, and you can give them out to people at conferences or a meetup or something. So I think that's pretty fun. Uh, but uh, so that's, that's, that's kind of like one extension, which I'm really excited about. Um, but I'm also going to be building lots of other little extensions. And it means that, because this is, this is just like, you know, if you, when, you, when you download it onto your um, L&D or whatever, or, 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 or your Blitz, it's like, you know, uh, five lines of Python or something to get the thing running. And then um, it just then adds all this functionality to your node. But you could also have it running, like, um, I think the, 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 I've got a, a, a sort of online version, which isn't as up-to-date as this, hasn't got the extension things built in yet. Uh, but that's on alinbits.com. And um, I'm actually using Open Node to, to, to be the, the, the funding source behind that. So I think that's quite funny because you've got like KYC, AML5 type stuff. Um, uh, but then, you know, who is the custodian? So, I mean, it's very easy to kind of switch funding sources. So I could technically have like, Ellen Bits could have Ellen Bits as a funding source. You could have like multiple funding sources on top of each other. And it's like, who, who's, actually, who's actually custodian of the funds? Um, um, I've also had it running off LNTX part and I've had it running off uh, LNPay as well. Um, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and uh, I think that's it. I, want to, I need to get it sorted for Sea Lightning too. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I've been planning about with for the past week. It's pretty cool. So are we going to be able to uh, post a, uh, a link for people to uh, in the show notes for, for people to be able to check out? Yeah, I mean, so uh, hopefully by the end of this weekend, I will have yeah. like the extension, a couple of the extensions running on ellenbits.com. Um, which is like my, so the idea is that as well, like anybody can run this and then they can be like an open node or they can be a custodian for other people. Like if, even if it's just their immediate friends and family, or you could just use it for like management of your own funds, like by splitting your funds into wallets. Um, uh, so anyway, so if you go on lmbits.com, that's like my version of that. But if you go to arcbtc backslash lmbits on GitHub, um, then all the codes there. It's free and open source. You can download, you can run it yourself, and then you can just have your own version of LM Bits. And it's pretty easy to get running locally. Um, and then you can do like an SSH tunnel out to the, to the world, which is in fact what I'm doing right now um, on, the, on the one which is there. Um, so yes, yeah, LMBits.com. Um, so really excited about that. Also, like insanely excited over all the uh, amazing work which has been done on the quickening um, point of sale terminal and the box which, uh, which CryptoClose has been working on. Um, getting like a steady stream of messages on Twitter of people showing me these boxes they're printing out. It seems to be really taking off. So I can't wait to print a bunch of those out. I'm going to take them to uh, Advancing Bitcoin and then use them in a workshop there. So it's going to be great. That's actually a really great segue and into, uh, into chatting with Rick, right? Because he's got, he's got all kinds of stuff going on, man. So look, so cool. uh, BTC Socialist, thank you so much. I, uh, I really look forward to, uh, to trying out the, uh, the LN bits. I, I love, man, I, I've done so many of your projects. I, I think it's awesome. You're, you're like one of my favorite people in Bitcoin. And uh, seriously, like your, your projects have, have made me confident to- Yeah, uh, I need to do, I need, well, I mean- like, Actually honestly, try like, things. Yeah, yeah, but you've, 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 you've you're, because you're, you're, uh, yeah, we've like chatted privately and stuff and you've got some of these things running and you've built some things epic, like the Sweet Machine. Um, uh, uh, and that's kind of like an amalgamation of projects and your own stuff in there as well. So it's just cool to see like, when you make something, you know, and obviously in free and open source, other people then taking that thing you've made and like improving it, and making it better, and making spin off projects and stuff. It's great. That's the best part about it. Um, uh, you know, uh, so no, I, I, it, it, I'm equally very excited to see what just what comes out of, of the, some of the stuff which, you know, uh, is, is put out there. I put that other people put out there. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. Rick, man, how you doing? Good. I want to know more. Can I print off those paper bills with 20 sats on it at the moment right now? Cause yeah. I don't want to give them away. Seriously. <laughs> They're sick. You'll have to wait a couple of days for it to be on the ellenbits.com, but then it'll also be on the uh, ellenbits GitHub. The code will also be a bit messy. We're going to tidy it up then next week. We're going to audit through it and just make it. So it, it need the, that whole project needs to be the point where like uh, someone who can write, you know, fairly rudimentary Python can go in there and they can make a plugin um uh and then use that plugin in the system and then if that plugin is like you know kind of accepted by the wider community we could then put it on the GitHub yeah. the rest of the plugins too all i know is that is awesome and i want to give some away <laughs> yeah they're great uh we can jump right into the quickening box we get 
I guess I get way too much credit for this. Uh, the programming and software, Ben, 100%. And then uh, Crypto Nobo, we'll put it in the show notes, has pretty much designed a lot of it. And then we've just been helping print off every single prototype because we have so many printers that we can print off prototypes and give suggestions on how those things print, uh, how easy it is, if we need to add supports or change the design in certain ways for the screen to fit. So we, did, we have had a small part in it. But Crypto Novo has went crazy on it, and he's designed something really sweet. I know we have a version two in the works that he's finalizing right now. I'm going to start the print after this to make sure that's all good, and then we'll release that new updated version on uh, the File Factory, and I believe he's going to put it on GitHub. Is the latest one on GitHub yet? Does anybody know? I haven't checked this morning. Nope. Okay. I, I didn't check. Yeah, can, so, can you show us the box? Yeah, Sorry. <laughs> here, here's the box. Very cool. Nice screen. And then this so will rough. be able to super glue in. So you'll have this part where you have your four pegs on the back. Amazing. Yeah, and you'll just put it on here. And either you can use uh, nuts to screw into the plastic to hold it in, which a couple of users have already shown on Twitter, which is almost better than the plastic caps that we had to go over because it really locks into that plastic. So once you print that and put it on the screen, then you can actually put your keypad here. And I, the only reason I didn't super glue this one is because I keep using it as a test model, but you're mm -hmm. able to just super glue it in place here. So it locks it in. And then you just run it right through the back and then you plug it all in. And then there's a separate cover that you lock in there. So it's actually really easy. Like this is only $4 to print for all of the parts together. So it's really that, cheap. That brings the whole cost of that point of sale terminal. And these are off the shelf parts as well. This isn't even like my own printed, yep. like the, the components aren't, isn't like my, my own printed like board or anything. It's just off the shelf parts you can buy. That brings the whole cost of that project up to $12. For a point That's of sale. crazy. For a point of sale terminal, it's awesome. And the best part with these is you can completely customize them to whatever you want. You can change the uh, shell colors. You can change your screen colors. Cause these, after you print a new one, you can just glue it in, pop it out, switch it out. You put, put your own logos whatever you want yeah you can put logos on it so it's I, pretty crazy that's that's a really exciting project that i'm actually really happy to be part of because no it's because I, I, a lot of people are getting excited about the m5 stack sats thing and i actually yeah. I was more excited about the thickening i was like dude this is <laughs> it's cheaper and, and, and more, more more sort of hacky and um i know they've they've had they printed out one of your boxes and they've had it in room 77 and I want, I want the next time when I go to room 77 for them to have one of those things as opposed to the M5. Yeah, see, I saw that too. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's room 77. We got one in there. And I want them to print off the new one once you get it finalized. And like, maybe, maybe I'll customize it and put room 77 on the top above the screen and stuff like that, make it special for them. So that'll be sweet. So yeah, we're helping where we can on that project. I'm, I'm really excited. It feels good to finally give back another open source project because that's our main goal, really. Lightning shells, we want to keep closed source just to keep income coming in, but we also want to slowly build the company where we can release a lot more open source projects because this excites me way more when you can work with the community and keep changing and building it. So. But you will you will sell those boxes too because, I mean, obviously a lot of people haven't got 3D printers. Yeah, absolutely. So once we get oh, yeah. the actual final design nailed in, we'll put it on the shop and allow people to customize it just like our lightning shells and everything. But we also want to have that opportunity where they can take the design and then print it themselves. Brilliant. Uh, besides that, uh, I don't, I don't, when was the last time I've been on here? It's been a while. I've yeah, we, <laughs> it's almost two uh, months. We have, we released build a note. I think I've told everybody about that before on here. Uh, we also have, my note is starting to blow up a lot, the whole software package and everything. So we brought that into our build a node platform and people are loving that, which is pretty crazy. Uh, we also have all the parts. Finally, I just got to find time to build a new lightning shell that actually has that breaker board for the hard drive. So yes, I know that's one of the biggest things that people are looking for is a lightning shell that has that hard, separate hard drive board. So that'll be in the works. And then also I want to make it so you can use one of these to keep the LCD wherever I want. So I'm not just limited to right above the board itself on the Raspberry Pi. So I can really do get creative and change a lot of things with that. Um, we also hired Lamy on board for crypto cloak. So I'm not just by myself anymore. We actually have a design engineer, which is exciting because he can create a lot more products and help me design and it frees up more time to bring more open source projects too. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, what else? I don't know. There's just so much, I guess it's been two months. The, uh, 
yesterday the um the litho oh yeah come on like that <laughs> lithographs are awesome uh we weren't <laughs> expecting that to be that big of a hit but they are sweet i've always wanted to do one too and he's like oh, well i got all this software to do it and i got printers and let's pull the trigger on it and i go absolutely and they turned out awesome because the all you do is stick an led light behind it and it's just inverse image and it's crazy it looks really cool so we're excited about that one I ordered one. I'm super excited to get it. Are you uh, are you able to show anything of it right now? Yeah, what's I don't actually it? have that at all. That is all with Lamy. It is okay. Yes. Um, it, it's it's a really cool uh, Ben. It, it's a it's a really cool litho of um, you know like the uh, the guy folks mask and you know be your own bank and yeah, it's actually from the artist Lucho. It's one yes, of the actual from Lucho Paletti that we brought into the three printing. And three print a lithograph, so you just shine light through it, and it actually looks like the real image. Also, oh, so it has like different depths of. of yeah, the... yeah, it, absolutely. Let me try to find an image. I don't want to take a, too much time trying to find it. Maybe when I get to the next, I'll search it and bring it back up, so I can show it at the end, maybe, because it's really cool. It, it turned out great. Yeah, um, other than definitely... that, yeah, that's that's all I got. Yeah. Okay. Good. Very cool. Very cool, man. Thank you very much. Um, here we're gonna uh, we're gonna move on to uh, to Oliver and uh, of course you know today was the uh, the first day that I heard of your 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 skill in baking so uh, I don't know if you could talk about the uh, you know what what that's all about <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure um, yeah it's been a while since I've been on the the round table uh, I was just about to start the lightning laps the last time and now it's been four months already uh, yeah the, the, the bakery is finally open which means uh, my uh, um, the, uh, pull request for L&D, which allows you to bake custom macaroons, uh, is now in the latest version. So with uh, 0 0.9, uh, it actually made it in my PR, which was uh, at the point, I think, one and a half years old. So yay. Um, and uh, it was actually Lalu, aka Rose Beef, that wanted to rename it to bake macaroon so that's why it's also called the bakery and yeah so um, I'm not really into baking but I'm into uh, building bakeries so <laughs> that's cool yeah <laughs> uh, yeah this is so, yeah sorry go ahead. So I wanted to ask you so um, I guess what does that uh, I, like for the the use case you know just for people to understand like what would they you know like how would they use this yeah uh, well, the first, uh, the macaroons themselves are our way of um, handling authentication. So it's uh, a macaroon is, is just an access token. And the way they worked before is that you had uh, just three separate uh, macaroons. Like one is the, called the admin macaroon, which gives you all the power. You can do everything. Uh, you've got the read-only macaroon, which, yeah, as the name says, you can only read stuff. And then you get the special invoice macaroon, which only allows you to create invoices. And you can really customize that. But internally, we already had uh, like a huge list of uh, actual um, actions you can perform. Uh, you just didn't have any way of composing them uh, yourself. So with the Macaroon Bakery, you can go ahead and say, yeah, I want this permission and this permission and only this permission and then give me a Macaroon for this. So it allows you to uh, do fine-grained access control to your node. So you can give someone access to just one functionality on your node, which can be useful for securing your node uh, with like a web shop or something or to literally give someone else access to your node and know that they can only perform this, this specific action. And this itself is, uh, I think, quite useful, but uh, it's, it's just a foundation to build more functionality on top. So what I, I already did start, and I think also uh, talked about here uh, uh, for a little bit was the, the accounting. So you could also create uh, um, a virtual account on your node, give it the balance, and then give someone a macaroon that can only spend from this uh, account. And uh, to, to be able to do this, we, are, we need this bakery in there because it will allow uh, more features like that in the future. So that's why it's uh, nice to have it in now, finally. 
Yeah, accounts, man. Like, I, I've been begging for accounts. Because you don't yeah. want to expose, like, with, if I have an ATM, I don't want to expose all my funds. I want to expose just a little bit, you know, um, which is yes. going to fund the ATM. Uh, so it's going to be so useful. I mean, I'm yeah, kind of... and um, I didn't have time to uh, continue working on that for a while, but uh, just, just this week I uh, continued. And a good friend of mine uh, at Coin Forensics, uh, he gave me the idea that, yeah, wh why only spend from an account? you can also uh, receive to an account. If you just link the account to an invoice, uh, then if that invoice is paid, the way you can recredit that account again. So you could uh, really give someone access to your node and they could send and receive uh, fully on, uh, on their own. So yeah, uh, uh, I continued on that a little bit and hopefully we'll have it in a future release. I'm not sure if it will really go into LND or maybe as a separate package because it's a lot of custom logic, um, maybe. I don't know if we really want this into, into core, but uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting to work on it. So I'm sorry, just to make sure I understand. Uh, so th this would be something that like what, like you'd somehow have to enable separately or like it, yeah, like um, it, would ju it, it, it just uh, an idea to build it as an external pros, uh, process that would like proxy your calls, uh, your gRPC calls to the to your node. So you put it in front of your node as a like an access proxy. Um, okay. It would it would filter stuff uh, for yeah this specific functionality, but maybe we yeah a, a proxy like this would be useful for other stuff. So you could, you could have like a separate port where this proxy runs and you could only expose this uh, to the outside world and then give people access to this port and you know that you have an additional layer of like custom uh, control in between. So, uh, so you don't have to expose your uh, sensitive gRPC port or something like that. That's just an idea I got while working on this. It's not sure if it... Uh, uh, it will work that way, but yeah, I, I have doubt that the uh, LND maintainers actually want all this accounting stuff in LND because it's a lot of custom logic. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. So I, I just got doubt that my accounting PR would ever be merged. So that's why I'm thinking about doing it externally. But yeah, it's just an idea. Yeah, like I could definitely see that it would be a, not uh, maybe an isolated use case, right? For maybe more, you know, like you said, like web shops or something like that. People requiring more security, you know, or even just people that are, you know, more security conscious and want to add that, you know, that layer on top of it. So that, that definitely, uh, I, I could see that, you know, not everybody would, you know, have maybe the, the ability or the inclination to enable that. We can do that in RTL. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, to have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, very cool, Oliver. Man, thank you so much. We're gonna uh, we're gonna move on to Suhev, and I know he had uh, there was an update to RTL. Tell yeah. us what's uh, what's going on. Yeah, I think uh, since we last spoke, uh, uh, there's been a lot of action. Um, we came up with a completely new UX for RTL. Uh, so if you've been using RTL uh, earlier, it was a you know, functional but raw uh, you know, experience. Uh, now we have a much more polished experience um, where we have given special attention to uh, the personas of th uh, the type of users on RTL and then you know, what type of experience you want to give them. And then uh, simplify the UX, uh, you know, consolidate functionality, reduce the menus, um, and add a lot of uh, you know, fine items which will actually give you a lot more information on your node than uh, you were actually getting earlier. I can, since everybody was kind of showing, uh, you know, the products, I can actually do a quick demo and actually show you what I'm talking about. Right? Yeah, because we're going to link to the, uh, we're going to link to the video because uh, BTC Socialist is going to put this up on WCN. Okay. So sure. that way people could actually see all the stuff that we're talking about as well. Okay, great. All right. So let me do a quick demo. Uh, Second. I just share. want to point out the new RTL is beautiful, by the way. Thanks. 
It is lovely. Yeah. Really well done, man. And I love everybody doing the uh, the dark themes because let's face it, you know, like why does the experience have to look so ugly? Yeah, I mean, Mike Ellen Bits is very very pale at the moment. I was thinking I might might try and make it a bit more darker, a bit more hacky. Oh yeah. Or we'll have the option to customize in the CSS or something. I was actually looking at Ride the Lightning. I was thinking I could just steal that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so let me log in and show you what I'm talking about from a persona perspective also, right? So if you log in right now, right? So this is the view that we have for the, there are two types of personas. One is the routing node operator persona, which is much more technical, right? Uh, get to see a lot more detailed technical information. And then there is another persona called merchant. Um, that merchant persona is primarily, you know, from a BTC per space perspective, user's perspective. So their, um, the dashboard at least will be customized for their, what they want to see, right? And it will not be that technical. So, so let me show you how to switch that. So we go to settings and change the persona to merchant and update and then go to dashboard. So this is the persona that you get for uh, a merchant, right? So merchant will only see the balances as one tile, uh, see inbound liquidity. So these are channels with remote balances, right? Um, and then outbound liquidity, the channels with the local balances, right? And sorted per capacity. You see a total capacity at the top and then you see, you know, individual channels uh, kind of sorted in the capacity order, right? So, so this is the view for merchant, and then you have an ability to receive and pay, you know, quickly on the dashboard itself. You don't have to kind of search through the menu for these basic functions, right? So this is uh, the persona for the merchant. Uh, routing node persona is actually much more, uh, uh, you know, involved. Uh, you see, uh, you know, basic node information, you see the balances, like in versus on-chain balances, you see the routing fee uh, that you are kind of routing through your channels, uh, you see your channel status, you see your channel capacity, right? So here, actually, you see uh, for each channel, uh, a channel score as well. This channel score um, is basically changes, uh, varies from one to zero. Uh, so a perfectly balanced channel will have a score of one. Uh, and a completely imbalanced channel or lopsided channel will have a score of zero. So between one and zero, uh, you'll see the channel balances. You'll see your overall look, uh, total channels uh, score, and then your, you know, the channels which are kind of bal uh, sorted out in their balancing order. And you can, uh, if you want to like sort these based on capacity, you can do that as well. So these options are available uh, for you to kind of, you know, uh, if you want to customize this view. And then uh, on most of the tiles, we have a logical, you know, if you want to go to your routing fee uh, page, you can go from there. You can go back to the dashboard. You can go to your on-chain, uh, you know, management section. Uh, you can go to the channels section as well, right? Uh, and here you can individually see your uh, balance scores, see your local and remote balances. You see how many sets sent, set received. And then uh, here, actually, channel management is actually much more uh, involved now. So you have a lot of actions available on each channel. You can view your basic uh, information on the channels. You can view the remote fee. This is actually a very good feature. So you can see uh, what kind of fee policy your peer has, right? Uh, and that can give you a perspective of whether, you know, uh, if you're getting traffic from that peer, or if you're not getting traffic from that peer, that peer might be charging a lot of fee, right? So. Uh, as far as your channel balancing and your uh, liquidity allocation is concerned, you can take these factors into account. You can update the fee policy per channel. Uh, you can update the fee policy for all channels, right? Uh, and then you can close channels. So all of, so basically these context-based actions are available on the UI. Same type of actions are similar type of actions. Uh, logic is available for your peer section, right? Uh, so. So this is the, and then, uh, you know, <clears throat> there is, a, if you are running multiple nodes, uh, there is an ability for you to switch uh, nodes here. So you can actually, uh, this is a configuration that you do in your config file, and then you can actually switch to a different node. So right now I'm switching to a lightning, a C lightning node. So C lightning node is slightly different UI, but uh, more or less a similar type of experience. Uh, yeah, I'll stop here if you have questions. Thank you for multi-node support. Thank you. Yeah, props to the multi node. We were talking about yeah. that like like on the first I think it was the first episode of the roundtable, wasn't it? The idea of the multi node. Yeah. It's such yeah. an important feature.
Uh, it's yeah. sick. Especially for us that run like three or four nodes, it's so nice to have one UI yeah. that you switch back and forth. Built like that. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So multi, yeah, multi node support has been there for a while. We just kind of polished it a little bit. Um, now, then the next uh, release candidate, we are simplifying the uh, the configuration file. So there's just one config file now, uh, where you can uh, either configure uh, one node or you can configure multiple nodes. C Lightning, LND, however nodes you are running, you can configure and run through one UI. So on, um, so so tell us uh, for the listeners what. Uh, you know, what different nodes does your, because I know that everybody can download it, right? Everybody can download it and install it, but like what version of Raspi Blitz is this going to be included in? Is this going to be in the 1.4? Yeah, I think that's the target. Uh, in 1.4, you will have the new UI. And oh, all the sick. New, new features. Yeah. So nice. So for BTC Pay Server, is this in that one yet on the latest so, update? So BTC Pay Server has the uh, C Lightning for C Lightning BTC Pay Server has the latest UI, but for LND there was an issue in our uh, uh, configuration, so we are fixing that now. So with the uh, next update, you'll get the LND uh, version as well. So that's what we've been working on, um, and the next ones, uh, you know, what uh, feature will our major release will have uh, loop integration. Uh, that's what we are working on right now. Yay. So you'll have. Yeah, <laughs> you'll have loop in and loop out uh, in the UI. Very cool. Very cool. Um, can you just, uh, Suheb, can you just explain, uh, you know, just for the listeners, um, you know, what, what that functionality is or, you know, what, what, it, yeah. would, uh, what it would bring? Sorry. <clears throat> sure. Uh, so uh, main objective uh, for loop in and loop out is prime for loop out what this would be that if you are a merchant, right, how do you get inbound liquidity? Or even if you are a routing node, let's say you want inbound liquidity. So Loopout is a non-custodial, uh, you know, option for you to uh, gain inbound liquidity where you don't have to pay someone to open channels or, you know, ask someone to open channels to you. Uh, but you can kind of uh, on your own uh, uh, use Loopout to gain inbound liquidity. Whereas loop in is for you to, uh, let's say you have... Um, if you want to gain, uh, uh, you know, or top up your channels uh, on the local side, so loop in is a feature uh, for you to do that. So very basic terms. These are the uh, at a very high level. These are the features, um, and I think loop out is actually much more critical for merchants who are setting up web shops, and they want to receive uh, and or they want to get an ability to receive transactions. So loop out um, gives you the flexibility without actually approaching anyone or you know ask, going to any other uh, liquidity providers who are selling inbound uh, capacity. You can gain inbound capacity on your own. So I think it will be very helpful for uh, you know merchants who are setting up web shops uh, to receive over lightning. Absolutely, that's huge because I always feel bad saying, "Hey, somebody connect to our <laughs> BTC Pay server node. We need more liquidity yeah. and inbound." So that's huge. And if anybody wants to, please, we'll put the notes. <laughs> <laughs> like on that note, uh, you know, if we can yeah, add yeah. those, <laughs> we do need some. So hold on a second, because I, I just want to, so, because am I able to provide inbound liquidity to your note, uh, to your BTC pay server with my regular lightning note, or do I have to be running BTC pay server to do that? No, it's just regular just channel connection. Regular channel yeah. connection, right? That's yeah. all it is. Cool. Yeah, you just connect to the node and open a channel. You have provided the liquidity. Very cool. All right, guys. So uh, if uh, does anybody have anything else? I want to know, is there going to be a way, I don't know, in the future, where we press a button and it kind of balances all your channels? Is that yes. a possibility? Does anybody know? Because for me, it's a struggle right now, just finding the time to try to get my channels balanced and everything. Is there ever going to be an easy way to press a button or do a command or something where it automatically balances your channels? Do you guys know of anything that's being worked on? Uh, I know that it won't be an L&D. That uh, was a decision we... Uh, I, I think we arrived at, but what we uh, had in the latest release was to make it very easy using the, the RPC. So you can, uh, what you 
previously had to do a lot of manual stuff to find a route and whatever. So now by just using the gRPC interface, you can also find routes to yourself. So LND allows you to find circular routes back to yourself and then uh, to also execute this. So all that is needed is uh, UI or uh, like a, a controlling um, tool that, that actually calls the interface. So it would be perfect for uh, RTL to add as a feature um, yeah. because um, the decision was that uh, a lot of um, user preference what how they judge a channel to be balanced. So that's not some logic that we actually want to have inside l &D, but of course we want to provide all the tools that are necessary, all the, the, the interfaces to allow it. So um, whatever tool integrates it first, uh, there are some command line tools out there, but it obviously would be awesome to have it in RTL. Yep. So we are planning to add the, that feature definitely uh, in RTL. Uh, but channel balancing, uh, my view is that it's not, uh, you should actually not go for a single button click type of functionality to balance your channels, because that's a decision you should make at the channel level, right? Because uh, sometimes your peer might be charging a lot of uh, very high fee and there's no point in balancing that channel because you'll not, you're not really getting any traffic from that channel, mm -hmm. right? So that's a decision you should make channel by channel, right? That's why we have given, given that fee feature of view, view remote fee, right? So if you are kind of running low or, and you should also balance, keep your channels balanced at the aggregate level rather than trying to you know balance each and every channel. So uh, some channels might be out of balance on the other side and some might be on the reverse side. So as long as overall you're balanced, you are fine. So don't worry about balancing each and every channel, right? Second thing is uh, look at uh, your re uh, remote nodes uh, fee policy before deciding whether you want to balance channels or not, right? Um, so when, when you, once you have those decision points, then you can actually use, for instance, loop out also. Let's say you are kind of, uh, depleted on all of your um, outgoing side uh, or the remote side and you want to balance channels. So view, first of all, look at, you know, which peers are good and you're getting, getting a lot of traffic from them and then use loop out because you can do loop out specific to a channel. So you do a, a channel specific loop out and balance that particular channel, right? So, uh, so uh, in the, in uh, basically to keep the long story short, it's not a simple decision of, just giving one button and balancing all channels. It's a kind of a subjective view. You should uh, carefully view, figure out what channels you want to balance and what channels you, you can keep out of balance. There's another thing to note is that, you know, once we'll have MPP or AMP, uh, you know, in place, um, and once the traffic picks up, right, uh, you would not really need to, ideally if you're running a right routing node, there should be an ample traffic balancing, uh, you know, channels on, on both sides or, uh, you know, the traffic. Uh, so that you really don't have to worry about balancing channels individually. That should be uh, typically, you know, in extreme cases that you really have to. Ideally, I would expect uh, merchants to be, uh, you know, well, looking at their um, out, uh, remote capacity to uh, gain uh, channel uh, liquidity rather than routing node operators balancing the channels really because the traffic ideally should take care of, uh, you know, balancing your channels uh, and you should pay less attention to that. Yeah, I totally forgot about AMP coming out. Like that's going to be a huge improvement for Lightning. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, hey, I love it, it will also allow you to loop in and out uh, multiple channels at once. So that will really be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But it will take a while still. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love the sweater, by the way. Love the Genesis block. Shout out to the Genesis block. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> this is from Bitcoin shirts, by the way. Yeah. It's a shilling Bitcoin shirts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Um so there's gonna be uh Bitcoin twenty twenty coming up. Uh I'm gonna be going to that. Ben. Uh, who, you know, we, we just got to roast him a bit because he, he totally dumped on it and, and is, is now apparently going. Yeah, it's San Francisco, man. San Francisco. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the, it's the crazy poverty. So I was stood outside the Uber office. There was a guy just like pooing himself on the street. And I was like, dude, this is my, 
<laughs> and everyone was walking past with the mochaccino, like heading this guy like this. And I was like, this will help this guy, you know, prove himself. Um, so I, I swore never to go back. But then uh, Bitcoin, they got in contact and they, they want me to hook up. The, whoa, what's that? Whoa, <laughs> the bee just landed on me. Um, uh, they want me to hook up um, the... There's bees in your house? There's bees in here somewhere. Um, <laughs> They want me to hook up the uh, arcade machine awesome. uh, again. So they want me to go over and do that. So I was like, oh, okay, I suppose. Um, and it should be fun as well. Uh, it should be fun. There's some uh, really interesting Tony Hawk's going. So um, taking my skateboard. Yep. So get to sign it. I thought about doing like a Bitcoin graphic on my, on my skateboard and then trying to get Tony Hawk to sign it. Um, uh, but no, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, it would be good. It would be good. There's some interest. There's some good people going there. And this year as well, I think they're trying to build something of a hack space as well, which is definitely lacking last year. It was me and uh, Stefan Snigrov on two tables, like covered in wires. Um, uh, but inevitably, because obviously the, it's Bitcoin, it's all dorks, aren't we? Like our little table, like drew in all the like developer types. So we actually had quite a busy table going on. Uh, so, so it's good that they're now expanding that and the hack area is going to be a little bit bigger. So looking forward to that. I feel like I'm going to be spending a lot of time bothering you at your table. So. Oh, you can help. I can help. I'll be doing the workshop. Yeah, help. exactly. Yeah, we'll have we'll have uh, the quotes at the um, the quickening boxes there. Brilliant. Um, that, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So I suppose one of the L the LMD lot will be there, will they, Oliver? Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess so. When exactly is it? Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, March March twenty sixth and twenty seventh, I think, in yeah. uh, San Francisco. Yeah. Twenty seventh, twenty eighth. Yeah. 27, 28? There, but uh, some yeah. of us will make it, yeah. And then after that, like immediately afterwards, you have the Barcelona um, thing in April, don't you? Uh, Barcelona, is that, has that been announced? Am I, am I announcing something? The lightning uh, Yeah, that's uh, Fulmo doing uh, the hack day again, this time in Barcelona. I think it's been announced, yes. Uh, you're, going, you're going to go to that? I don't know. I'll be doing a lot of travel this year, so I'm not sure if I'm going to make it there, but we'll it's see. Quite, it's quite unproductive, isn't it? You know, like traveling about and going to all these conferences, drinking so much beer. and <laughs> <laughs> It's a very unproductive experience. Well, it, it, it can also be great to meet the community. So, uh, yeah, I think it's worth it. If you can make it, you should go. So. Yeah. yeah, I bought a couple of core devs like pints of beer in the past, and I've been like, man, I feel like I'm attacking the Bitcoin protocol by buying them pints of beer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Leaving brain cells. <laughs> We've seen what happens. <laughs> you know. Is uh, is anybody else going to be heading out to uh, Bitcoin Conf 2020? Rick, Suhev? I'm uh, not at the moment. Uh, Lightning in a box is, I think. Yeah, he's going. Cool. I believe he's going, so maybe I'll get convinced to go. I don't know. Suhev is going? Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Cool. Oh, so go. oh, cool. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. All right, so I'll finally get to hang out with a bunch of you guys. That's awesome. Yeah. We should do a show. Yeah. We'll do a show live. I, I was thinking about that. I mean, look, I carry with me all the, uh, you know, I have a whole bunch of equipment that I carry with me anyways, and I'll have my laptop, and I can always bring, you know, some of my invoice terminals and stuff. Yeah. So now you're forcing me to go so I can make the first lightning roundtable live Great. Yes. <laughs> nice. It'd be pretty. Look, it would be pretty cool. It would yeah. be. So you know. Oh, Oliver, you too. Uh, <laughs> sitting around being productive bollocks. Get on hop, a, hop across the pond, you know, just to do a live um, show. We'll, we'll see, maybe. <laughs> no, no, no pressure. It's it's different, you know. Like BTC Socialist is getting invited. I, I totally. Uh, It'd be different, you know. I, I even I'd like to go to some of the conferences. Like I'd love to go to the Baltic Honey Badger conference or something like that, you know, or the uh, yeah. you know the Lightning conference that you guys have out there in Germany, which is awesome. Yeah, there's a lot going. There's definitely a lot going on this year. A lot of um, a lot of conference. Every couple of weeks there seems to be a conference on. But I am I am very much like Oliver. I I don't want to zip about as much this year because you just don't get as much done. No, um, you don't. Uh, so I need to get some hacks, building some. Oh boy. Stuff. Did I just do that? Oh, yeah, you did. Okay, so people can't see it on, uh, they're not going to be able to see it on the podcast, but uh, like I said, we're going to be putting a link to it in the show notes. So oh, it's, yeah, the, uh, it's the lithograph um, that is absolutely beautiful. I'm so, it's so actually excited. Pretty sweet. Oh. So as you can see, this is how it looks like when the light actually shines through, and it's all based on the layers you have at those certain oh my God. heights. How long so, does it take to print? Uh, I think 30 like something hours, isn't it? 
That was for the outside box. It was 27 hours for the black box on his printer, but I think the actual litho is like seven to 12. That's not bad. No, it's I thought not you could just box. replace the, the black box thing with like a, a regular off the shelf picture frame. Yeah. See, yeah, you could probably save on that. But yeah, it turned out awesome. I, I'm so excited. It's so nice. It's just so cool. But yeah, yeah. I just want to show you guys. Oh, that is awesome. So what's, um, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I was just wondering uh, what, what's next, what's next for, for um, particularly like Oliver, because I know he's been focused on the Smack Room stuff for ages, so like it's, um, now it's finally like getting PR'd in and it's, it's, it's coming out then, the bakery. Um, uh, what's, ne what, what, what's, what, what, what's next for your work in L&D? Uh, what uh, I've also been working on uh, was what uh, Rose Beef announced at the Lightning Conference, is uh, LSAT. Uh, the lightning enabled uh, authentication token. Uh, I think it's the abbreviation for lightning service authentication token, yeah. Um, which will uh, allow uh, an OAuth um, type of authentication using macaroons and uh, proof of payment um, through the payment hash and pre image. So we'll going to release something very soon. Uh, it will be coupled to loop as our first service that will be um, using this uh, new mechanism. Uh, so that will be interesting. And um, for the Bakarun stuff, nothing is really planned uh, as in uh, as a company, but I am going to do some stuff on my own in my free time, spare time on uh, the whole macaroons um, accounting, obviously, because I, yeah, I, I think there's a lot of use case there. Um, yeah, so free time. They give it. You got free time. <laughs> yeah. Really? Wow. Um, <laughs> it would still be cool if we, uh, what, what we talked about, um, to do it with the the, the card, the tap card. Um, yeah. But I didn't get to it yet. Uh, well, no, I mean, so like Alan URL kind of has a lot, has a lot of this functionality now yeah. um, as, a, as a kind of a hacky way of, of, of bringing some of this functionality to, to Lightning. Um, uh, there is Alan URL auth, um, which uh, Fiat Jaff has an example of on his site. You can log in, you can create an account just with a QR code, you scan it with your wallet, and then you know, that's it. That's your authentication. Um, and it's such a nice experience. So uh, I look forward to LSATs on a more sort of protocol-y level layer. Um, uh, but yeah, I've been playing with the LN URL stuff with the tap and pay. Um, so like charging an LN URL withdraw with, you know, a minimum amount of zero, one, and then like, you know, maximum amount of like 200 thousand Satoshis or something. And then, uh, and then also putting a time thing on there. So you can only spend like up to 200,000 Satoshis every, you know, 10, 10 minutes or an hour or something. Um, and then putting that as a, uh, put onto an NFC card and then, you know, you tap onto a Lightning wallet like uh, Wallet Satoshi or Blue Wallet as well. I think do NFC, and uh, it just works. You know, it works well. It feels feels like tap and pay. Uh, the resource there is the, the issue, the security issue of you're giving someone the 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 right to you know spend those funds uh, to use that LNURL, just milk it. Um, but you could just like you can add a macaroon onto. Um, onto yeah you could have sorry a, a caveat onto a macaroon you could also have like i don't know some sort of like random string which you add onto the ln url and then uh the server also has the same thing and it generates the same string at the same time so you could have on the card you could have it like refresh using this thing i don't know how it would work um uh and then and then give like a unique ln url um uh to the merchant but i think i mean by the time you know i kind of get my head around that hopefully like you just be able to do it natively in L&D with, um, with macaroons and caveats. Well, like, will, will, will I be able to do like a, a time limit in the bakery? And a, time's already in there, isn't it, as a caveat? Yeah, it's, it's always been in there, just not really exposed uh, yeah. or no, not, not advertised. It was kind of hidden, but it was always in there, yeah. And you can, what about, so like minimax, you can do like a minimax amount type thing? Uh, no, not yet. Well, the, the whole amount based stuff is, is just an idea of mine just that I've been playing around with. There's a PR, yes, but um, yeah, as I said before, it probably won't make it into the, the, the core itself. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I guess we'll, we'll have to reach a decision whether we actually want... It must uh, be like, 
it must be hard to, you know, when you work on like a protocol layer level, um, and then you're, you're aware of all this functionality which is lacking, and then your the first initial instinct is, oh, I'll just incorporate it all into the, the base layer. But then you're like, well, hold on, actually, like maybe this should just be locked down and, 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 and should have limited functionality. And then you build those layers on top of it. Um, yeah, uh, exactly. It must be, it must be hard making those decisions, like the channel balancing thing, like making decisions like, okay, we're not going to do this on this layer. We're going to let people develop on top of it. And yeah. Of yeah. And obviously C lightning has the plugins, which allows you to do exactly stuff like this. And I think eventually we want to have not not the same model, but also something that allows you to build modular stuff so you can attach things to L and D. Um, I'm, um, roast beef has plants there. Uh, I don't know what, what time frame we're talking about, but something like a modular um, L and D will will be there in the future, I guess. Yeah, um, I think it's definitely the way forward. Yeah. give people like the option to extend in whatever direction they want to go in what you definitely don't want is to just cram all sorts of functionality into the the, the core demon no. so yeah <laughs> uh, especially if you can do it outside right if you have an rpc interface that allows you to do all of this outside then yeah there's no reason to put it in there yeah and then also like that's like with i'm finding with the lm bits thing because it's um interoperable then with other funding sources so it's it's quite useful to have it uh you know um uh, have some of that functionality just on on that separate layer sitting above it you know um yeah. but I mean, it does involve running a server and stuff so it's not very you know anomalous. and what is also very cool uh th this feature that's also made uh, it in in uh, the latest version is uh, the tlv custom records so this uh, new data format, the time length value, the TLV format that you can now use to send custom data uh, along with a payment. Uh, that will also allow a lot of custom use cases that uh, the, the demon itself doesn't need to know about. Oh, right? that... Just give it this uh, record, it will be attached to the payment and the recipient knows what to do with it. Because you can attach... he doesn't know what it is. You can attach quite a lot of data, can't you? Like what's the data limit you could attach? No, it, it's not a large amount. I think it's a few hundred bytes. It's limited it's by the, the, the onion, mm -hmm. um, but it's enough to just attach uh, additional IDs or stuff like that. Because there's um, lots of um, whispers of, 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 of lightning chat stuff going on, isn't there? I keep hearing people talking about, you know. Uh, that. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's what Yoast uh, was working on, WhatsApp. Uh, yeah. And also other implementations, things chat and whatever. Uh, and I think with the TLV records, uh, that's made very easy. It's now just a question, yeah, what, what IDs do we use to be interoperable, right? So I think there are uh, several projects working on this and now we just need to converge on, on speaking the same language. But uh, yeah, this, that's all enabled by the TLV records. So this will, again, um, just uh, have so many more uh, new use cases, which is very amazing. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting time for Lightning Network because like, it's like anything, when you initially have something, there's a euphoria attached to it and you overlook, uh, you know, all the potholes. And then as time goes on, you just become more and more aware of like bugs and things which are hard and complicated and things which used to be fixed and developed and blah, blah, blah. Well, that kind of honeymoon period is kind of gone with Lightning now. And, I think people have started to like realize there are, you know, this, it has, it has different thing. It has stuff. It does, it, it can be improved. Um, uh, so it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 I think it's just a, um, cause it was like, I don't, you remember when Lightning Network first started going live, it felt like it was just going to take over the world and, 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 and it was going to be super successful. And, uh, we're finding now that it's like, it's, it's difficult and like it's, it's complicated and, um, it's so cool to have you building, uh, you know, making, making it, making it work properly. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, well, I was, I was gonna say it's it. it I, I think um, you know what it, to your point, um, Ben. It's just the uh, the consistency of the uh, you know the payments and everything like that. Um, you know, so it's you, you could see people you know they, you know they they find it sometimes challenging, but at the same time you know it's you know you're building a giant payment infrastructure from the ground up, which is to a certain extent of people's own free will, 
You know what I mean? I mean, like we've chosen to, you know, go and, and, and build and discuss and, you know, spread the word of, you know, Bitcoin and lightning. And it, it just, you know, it, it doesn't happen easily. It doesn't come without, it doesn't oh, come yeah. without its, its yeah. challenges and its pain. So at the same time, you know, if anything, it, I, I think it's kind of like a, a testament to how, you know, how, how strong and resilient it really is. Yeah, no, I, there was a great talk. Cool. There's a date to a great talk by Christian Decker, one of the hack days. And I think it was called like, um, he kept reasserting, like it's a minimal viable product, you know, like don't expect too much of this thing. It's not perfect. It's, it needs to, we we just, we've just released the thing which will, is functional and will kind of work without losing all of your funds, you know, all the time. Um, uh, and it's going to keep getting better and better. But it's just, I, I think people overlooked that. And I think that's where he's key, he was keen to say something about it to begin with. But um, I think people overlooked it just because they were, they were excited about this new technology, which is amazing and a, a powerful technology. But um, uh, yeah, the, the honeymoon period just kind of feels like it's, it's over now with Lightning. And it's, it is now, this is the point in time where people are actually refining the system and making it work properly. Yeah. And this is where, you know, this is where we're seeing the better user experiences and, you yeah. know, people, people actually, you know, making things much more stable. Like even I could tell you with the, uh, the CASA and the SATS app, you know, when I first got the SATS app, I would have, you know, I would have more failed payments, right? But as the updates have come along and everything like that, and, you know, they've added more functionality to it and they've streamlined the user experience. So, you, you know, you don't experience that as often. Isn't this, so, that's, that's, that's like CASA only though, isn't it? The SATS app? Yeah, it is. It, it is. Why did they do that? It's very strange. Um, I, there, there's parts of it. Yeah. I, I find that strange also. Like, it's like, if, you can really easily interface with another SATS app user, but I, you know, it, it, when you're dealing with your, you know, your custom invoices, and again, maybe it's just because I don't use it often enough uh, in, in that respect, but, um, you know, if you're going to go and actually send something to somebody, uh, they also, they, they really want you to stick within their network, you know, mm. Mm. but you can scan an invoice and you can enter a payment code but they just facilitate, they obviously facilitate the user experience for. Maybe it's, maybe it's so, um, maybe as well, you know. maybe it's just, uh, you know, that they're starting their arena small and then they'll, they'll branch out and make it uh, more inclusive of the solutions. You know? It, it kind of makes me think of the Apple model. I was going to say it's like the Apple of notes or something. Right? Yeah, but it could also it, be like the, the Facebook thing, like you have to have the Harvard email, you know, to be able to log in. And then eventually they, when they get that locked down, they then start moving outwards. Yeah. Hopefully that's the model. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good point. So, um, yeah, does uh, anybody else got anything? All right, guys. Yeah, well, look, good. it's been uh, it's been really great having you all on. Thank you very much for another uh, another amazing episode of the uh, the roundtable. And uh, I'll probably uh, I think the next time we're going to speak is probably going to be right after the 1.4 release of the Raspy Blitz. So RTL is going to be out there, um, you know, as part of the install. And, you know, hopefully we'll have, uh, you know, we'll have Roots all on to, uh, you know, and a couple of other folks from the, uh, the project to, uh, to talk about the updates from there. I did try the release candidate. Um, so far, so good. It's running stably. That is not the node of mine that disappeared. Uh, so, but, uh, yeah. So yeah, look forward to that. So guys, thank you very much.